Didn't get your stimulus check? That's a neoliberalism. Where did the virus come from? I, I heard it came from neoliberalism. No date for Valentine's Day? Neoliberalism. I don't know what it is, but I know who's responsible. <sighs> Neoliberals. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. The question for today is, what is neoliberalism? This term gets thrown around a lot these days, both on the left and on the right, and tends to be kind of a catch-all for the system or the establishment in general, as someone who analyzes the history of political thought and political theory, I find the inaccurate portrayal and flippant uses of the term, its application as sort of a scapegoat for almost everything, to be a little bit of an issue. If we're using a term like neoliberalism, we should know what exactly we're talking about. Overuse of a term and using it in the wrong way can actually take away from the real serious critiques of that term and the people who abide by it or do its bidding rather than trying to get at solving real problems. I personally have never met a neoliberal outside of a few economics professors and very, very mainstream type people that I met at university. Nobody that I know or speak to online has ever really identified themselves as a neoliberal. Oh, of course there is that one Twitter account. But other than that, uh, I've never actually met a neoliberal in person, so I thought today we'd go over the term neoliberalism, what it means, where it came from. That way you can be better informed when you're hearing this term online and about in political discourse. Neoliberalism was first mentioned in English by French economist Charles Gide in 1889 to describe the beliefs of neoclassical Italian economist Matteo Pantaleoni. Fast forwarding to the interwar period, with Bolshevism and fascism on the rise in Europe and classical liberalism in the gutter, a new generation of intellectuals wanted to revivify it. The colloquy Walter Lippmann, a gathering of prominent intellectuals in Paris, 1938, settled on the term neoliberalism to describe a set of ideas encompassing, quote, the priority of the price mechanism, free enterprise, the system of competition, and a strong, impartial state. They wanted to construct a new liberalism which rejected socialism, collectivism, and laissez-faire state economics. The term would later show up in classical liberal Milton Friedman's 1951 essay, Neoliberalism and Its Prospects, where he continued to bolster it as a savior alternative to collectivism. In this essay, he says, quote, Neoliberalism offers a real hope of a better future. Despite leftist academics weaponizing the term as an insult, to describe opposition to social reform and blind corporatist free market foreign policy in the 70s and early 80s, prominent center-left members of the Democratic Party, such as former President Bill Clinton and presidential candidate Al Gore, began positioning themselves as neoliberals as the end of the Cold War put collectivism on its heels to appeal to a broader voting base. This is a crucial period because it marks the beginning of the cannibalization of both major political parties by this particular ideology, and more broadly, by blatant corporate interests. Though the preceding Reagan and Thatcher administrations are routinely cast as neoliberal, and they were, it is important to remember that both parties eventually adopted more or less the same mainstream neoliberal outlook, both domestically and abroad. A general consensus around such policies in global governance, literally called the Washington Consensus, was a prescriptivist playbook for free markets and economic growth settled on by pretty much anyone who wanted to be taken seriously in national politics. The effects of which U.S. citizens, along with citizens in many other countries, are still dealing with today. So what exactly are neoliberal policies, and why does it get blamed for everything? Neoliberalism centers around four key pillars of economic thinking. Market deregulation, that is, removing regulatory barriers and various other kinds of red tapes, rules, and so forth that might hinder business or commercial activities. Lowering trade barriers. Neoliberals fundamentally want free movement of people, goods, and services across all borders. They want people, that is human capital, as well as goods, to be able to move freely between countries wherever they please. Reduce government influence on the economy. 
In keeping with the last two points, in general, neoliberals want the government to be smaller and less impactful on the activities of the economy. And lastly, we privatize government programs and services. This often takes the shape of private public partnerships, where private organizations and corporations take over roles and duties previously carried out by government agencies. This is in keeping with the general trend of market deregulation and, again, reducing government influence on the economy. Neoliberal policy has been critiqued from both the left and the right by thinkers ranging from Slavoj Žižek and Noam Chomsky to Roger Scruton and Tucker Carlson. The financial crisis of 2008 has been seen by many to be a pivotal moment for the renewed critique of neoliberalism and the possible failure modes of runaway economic deregulation. What we received in the wake of the financial crisis, with governments intervening on behalf of big banks, Wall Street executives, and other major corporations, both then and again recently through the pandemic emergency bailout measures, I would argue, marks a new era distinct from complaints of neoliberalism in the past. Now we have a state that is actively and openly intervening using both fiscal and monetary policy, that is, in government spending and in central banking through interest rates, money printing, and debt purchasing, to aid corporations at the expense of overall economic health, stability, and yes, real growth. For this reason, I find cries of neoliberalism to be both empty and anachronistic. It's like blaming communism for the rise of critical race theory, or being mad at capitalism because corporate bailouts exist. It's either a confusion in terms, ignorance about what they mean, or just plain not having a broad enough ideological framework for articulating the real culprits. You know what they say, when all you have is a hammer bought from the Koch Foundation. I'm looking at you, Dave Rubin. But really, I made this video because I wanted to clarify the term so that people know what's being said when they hear neoliberalism getting thrown around, and hopefully can make their own judgments on whether or not and when it applies. If we're going to start moving past outdated and rigid ideologies, we have to be able to first agree on the terms we're using to describe the world. Otherwise, we'll spend all our time bickering and talking over one another. I hope this has been helpful. If you're still watching, I'd appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button to see more videos on the future of politics from yours truly, and I'll see you next time.